Uh, I admire your perseverance, so I'll try to get through this fairly quickly. Um, for those of you that have been here before, um, I'm sorry if I repeat some stuff, but I'm going to have to give you a little bit of a history of this project. Um, for, we're looking at the use of uh, an actinorhizal plant, alders, in improving and in performing reclamation work in the Athabasca oil sands area. Uh, we're also looking at this in applications that go beyond just the oil sands. So first I'd like to acknowledge uh, my co-authors, all from the National Research Council and or McGill University. Um, I also want to thank, uh, thank, be thankful for the participation of Ali Qureshi from Symbiotech Research, Damas Casa from University Laval in Quebec, uh, Francis Salafu from Suncor, and Sebastian Roy from the University of Sherbrooke. So this is the relationship we're looking at here. Um, alders are a pioneer species. They form, uh, there's a nitrogen fixing bacterium, Frankia, that forms nitrogen fixing nodules in the root system of this, of this plant. And this is part of an important symbiosis uh, the, it's, it's actually a very complex relationship between plants and microorganisms that goes beyond just the nodules. Um, bacteria also inhabit the insides of the roots and other tissues of the plants. They also uh, occupy the surface and the rhizosphere of the plant, the surface of the roots. And fungi contribute in, quite a bit to the actual nutrition of the plants themselves. So, between the plants, bacteria, and fungi, they have this very complex symbiotic relationship and that allows plants to grow in some fairly harsh environments. So we're essentially exploiting this relationship in uh, site reclamation work. The objectives of this particular program were to look at um, uh, greenhouse inoculation procedures to ensure that the plants were receiving a hefty dose of this important actinorhizal bacterium. Um, we wanted to look at the performance of these symbiotic alders in the field and look at the impact on the soil microflora and soil quality parameters including, in, in this case here, I'm going to show you some results for um, uh, microbial activity in regard to uh, hydrocarbon degradation. So, the first part of this work then involves setting up and growing the alders in a greenhouse setting and when the plants are about the four to six leaf stage they're inoculated with a fairly um, concentrated inoculum of the bacterium frankia and it's just shown in the upper part of the left hand side over here. It's essentially putting a few drops of uh, a very concentrated bacterial solution directly into the stem area of the plant. There, the growth is uh, continued in the greenhouse till they're a uh, reasonable size for outplanting. They're hardened for a certain amount of time prior to outplanting. And if you look at what the plant plugs look like the root zone you can see that um, the one in the middle is essentially a greenhouse plant that has no visible nodules on it the one on the right hand side is the heavily nodulated alder plant and the one on the left over here and it's showing a nodule a rather large nodule this is a naturally occurring phenomenon and it occurred in the greenhouse so even in the greenhouse setting, you can control certain parameters, but others are beyond your control. And then when you go into the field, most of the other parameters are beyond your control. So I'm going to talk about applying this uh, at a site here at Suncor MD5. It's the Millennium Dump, and it's an overburden reclamation area. We planted the alders initially in September, in June of 2009. Um, about for the first two weeks after the outplanting, there was uh, severe drought conditions, and then about two weeks after that, they had torrential rains. So the plants were really put through their paces. Um, one of the problems that uh, arrived as a result of this was uh, there were several areas that had become flooded and uh, there was residual water remaining that actually drowned out some of the plots. 
if I can just take you, show you some scenes um, through this, basically through the years. Um, the top left hand side is what the plantation looks like with the active uh, mining site in the background. The top right shows what the plots look like in September of 2012 and you can actually see two different plot areas here. Um, the plants were all extremely healthy, uh, shown by the large numbers of cones, meaning they're very in a very healthy state of reproduction. And also, if you look at the root zone themselves of some of these plants, you can see extensive nodule formation. So the plants in general were extremely healthy. And if you look at what they looked like after uh, essentially two growing seasons, that's uh, one of the technical staff there, she's about seven and a half feet tall. I'm only kidding, of course, she's five and a half feet tall. However, after three growing seasons, the plants are already well over two meters in height. And this is what they look like um, last September. So they're the plants, uh, these are the inoculated plants. And uh, in this particular area, the majority of the alders are well over three meters in height. So just not to show you just pictures, this is actually some of the data. And if you look at the, essentially what we're doing here is we're measuring the seedling volume index of the plants in the, each of the plots. And that involves taking the height measurement and the uh, diameter of the stem at the root collar zone. And performing a calculation to get what's known as the seedling volume index. If you look at the extreme left of this, the two first bars represent the um, uninoculated plants after two growing seasons, and the next two bars are the inoculated plants after two growing seasons, and they're designated by an F for the Frankia. The next four bars show the uninoculated plants after three years, and then the uh, inoculated plants after three years. So these are where the bars really start to become extensive and they're anywhere from three to five times the seedling volume index of the uninoculated plants. The last four bars are the measurements from this past year. So these first two here are the uninoculated plants and the last two are the inoculated plants. So the difference is three to four times between the uninoculated and the inoculated alders. And this is after uh, four growing seasons. The activity measurements that I talked about is essentially what we're looking at is we're using hydrocarbons as a substrate to just monitor, if you like, enzyme activity in general, microbial health in the soil and in particular. And uh, you could use any substrate. It could be glucose or anything else. These are labeled with uh, C14, so we can actually measure the amount of uh, carbon dioxide, radioactive carbon dioxide produced. And the three graphs here for three, three different substrates, hexadecane on the top, which is an alkane, and then two aromatic hydrocarbons, phenanthrene and naphthalene. And the graphs are essentially showing the soils, the bulk soils in the system through the years after initially at time zero in June 2009, then after two, three, and four growing seasons. If you look at <clears throat> hexadecane, for example, the uh, soil initially had hexadecane degrading activity, but uh, after two, three, and four growing seasons, that activity was becoming, was much, much greater, and it did not seem to be changing over time after two, three, and four years. The aromatic hydrocarbon degrading activity, on the other hand, stayed pretty consistent all the way through this. So the indication is that um, probably the, hydro the aromatic hydrocarbon degrading activity was already present in the soil and unaffected by it, but the presence of the plants here did appear to have a positive impact on the hexadecane degrading capacity. This is where it really gets complicated because looking at so quality parameters after four growing seasons did not seem to be very conclusive. Um, however, if you bear with me, I think if you 
tilt your head to the left and squint, you will see a couple of interesting trends that may be or are not developing here. And one is in the total nitrogen, there seems to be something going on over time here. We don't see any significant changes really in the overall conductivity in the soil, but if you tilt your head back to the right, you might see a little bit happening over time there too. And the variability in this data is still very high after four years. So I'm not gonna try and convince you to take anything out of it, but we're still monitoring it and we are starting to see what we think could be some interesting trends. Um, one of the other things that we have seen that's not shown here is that the plants are accumulating sodium ions. So they are actually uh, reducing the sodium concentration in the soil. We've done some metagenomic analysis on the soil as well as another indication of how the uh, total microbial community might have changed over time. Um, this large panel here, every color is a major phylum of bacteria and <clears throat> we're looking at a whole variety of different types of soils from these plots, whether they're from inoculated or non-inoculated, planted or even unplanted plots. And what we do not see is a lot of variation between the plots. The, la the bottom four colors from this purple color down are all a large group called the proteobacteria. And these are all bacteria involved in essential cycles, for example, like the carbon cycle, nitrogen cycles. So they're all present and they represent a significant proportion of the overall microbial community in these soils. And we don't see any major differences in, in those or any of the other groups across the different types of soils and the different types of treatments. Um, one of the interesting things that uh, kind of overlaid this at the bottom, this is the detection specifically of Frankia. This is, Frankia is an actinomycete that actually belongs to this group up here too. So you can see overall how actinomycetes are represented across the soils. But in looking specifically at Frankia, we can see that it's present through all of the soils in the Athabasca area, in fact. Some of these come from the Athabasca River. And if you look in the, in the nodules themselves, you can see that it is actually the predominant bacterium in the nodules of the alders. So um, this is why the, al the alder plants themselves can become naturally inoculated in the field is because Frankia do exist in the soil throughout the system. But the advantage is when you put them in the nodules right in the early stages of plant development, it seems to give the plants a real boost in terms of survival when they're out planted. And they seem to have a positive impact on other soil properties. So just to, just to finish this off, I want to take you through a little bit of a picture show here that's quite impressive. This is a satellite show, uh, shot showing the MD5 site. And if we start to zoom in on that, you can start to see right in this area that I put a box around some interesting features developing. And if you really zoom in on it, you can actually see our plots. They're square. You can see the lines in them. So along with uh, the Great Wall of China, um, I'm happy to say that these are plots is a man-made thing that you can see from outer space. So that's uh, basically what I wanted to tell you about. We're very happy with this project as a whole. Um, the plants are doing very, very well. The soil quality characteristics are a little bit behind in terms of us being able to follow them, but we're hoping to uh, continue to monitor this over the next few years. So I think I've summarized all of that, but uh, I can just take you through that again. Um, the greenhouse trials were effective in showing that uh, Frankia inoculated alders were better performing. And initially we did them in tailing sands, but we were also working on uh, other types of well sands materials. We started field trials at Suncor in 2009. And after four growing seasons, we have superior growth and seedling volume index of all the uh, inoculated alders in comparison to non-inoculated alders. We're seeing very good microbial 
uh, activity within these soils as well using hydrocarbon mineralization as an assay. And this is after four growing seasons and we, we're, although it's not statistically significant yet, we think we're starting to see some interesting trends in, in terms of the improvement in the soil quality characteristics. So I'd like to acknowledge in particular uh, all these people and these organizations and especially the uh, NRCAN PERG program for its support. Thank you very much.